nonsense again they said that last year uh hey the mayans might have been right i doubt it though no way we're all gonna be here and we're gonna see fights this year okay guys check it out let's go over some news in the world of boxing real quick all right and some mma it's just find out some crazy things so anyway it's uh it's probably gonna be friday by the time i get this out and things are jumping let's go according to tmz.com you know someone broke into mike tyson's vegas hotel room this weekend which was like two weeks ago at the cosmopolitan in las vegas and uh tyson was crashing with his family he watched stevie wonder for a new year's eve concert break it all down real quick the guy walks in tyson's knocked out and he realizes it's mike tyson's hotel room imagine you're going in there you, you gotta like uh you expecting some golfer laying there or whatever and you got a flashlight and you shine it on um, like the bed and you see fucking mike tyson's, tyson's tattoo on his face your pink guy probably shit his pants you're going to rob someone you're not expecting that so you get the hell out of there the one time mike tyson gets to beat someone down legally it doesn't happen because mike tyson was sleeping so the guy probably ran out of there with a big freaking log in his pants it was like holy shit bad luck at robbing people that's crazy i would have been like wow i go to rob someone i, I got zilla laying in the bed I'm out. Kelly Pavlik, uh, we all know he had substance abuse problem. He was arrested for drunk driving under the influence. Sad situation. And boxing is psychological. It's a big deal. And if you're prone to like alcoholism, I'm not a psychologist, obviously. But I guess if you lose and you're like undefeated and you get outboxed by a 40-something year old, all that manifests itself into your problem. You know what I mean? And uh, it's unfortunate. And I'd like to see Kelly Pavlik come back at some point in the near future, get his shit together. Come on, Kelly, get your shit together. We need a good gatekeeper. Because I think at this stage of the game, that's what Kelly Pavlik is in a middleweight super, what is a super middleweight division? He's a gatekeeper. And uh, I know people love to correct me. I'm doing this off the top of my head. So if I'm wrong about something, I can't keep all like the statistics in my head. I, you know, I got my little notes, my little show prep here, and I'm just riding with that. So dudes, Evander Holyfield, allegations of steroid, HGH use. Now, back in the day, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't Evander Holyfield training with Lee Hanley, Mr. Olympia? I mean, come on, is this a shock? Uh, I met Holyfield back in the day. Hmm. Maybe I should put that up there real quick in a picture, but uh, he's a nice guy. And I remember that, I'll never forget it, because I'm like waiting for Holyfield. I met him and, and said, what's up? We did whatever, a little talk. And back then I was doing like a radio show on uh, FM radio out here in New York. Anyway, his limousine driver tried to hit on my girl at the time. He was like, yo, on a down low, I'm here chatting with Holyfield, and this low life tool is on the side like, yeah, I'm cool with Holy. You, I'll, I'll, you, you can chill with him later, but after me and you hang out. This is just my girl at the time. I rolled up to, dude, Rick, this dude's trying to hit on me. This is what he's telling me. And I looked at this clown after I talked to Holyfield. I want to knock him out. Some little skinny ball limousine driver. Looked like he's 50 years old. Trying to hit on like some 19-year-old honey. What? Come on. We know about Cyborg, Christine Cyborg, Santos, or whatever. For a strike force Women's Champion. I'm like... I'm watching her, I'm bragging, like, yo, I call my boy, you gotta see this chick, she's, uh, you know, she's like basically undefeated, she lost back in the day, like I think one of her, to a double uh, leg lock or something, but she's basically like, she destroyed that, uh, what's her name, Gina Carana chick, and I'm telling my boy, you gotta come over and see this chick at MMA, she's amazing, real quick, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna call him up right now, live here, and this is unplanned, but... I'm gonna call my boy Ruben up. I invite him over to this fight. He's seen it like the day after. All right, Ruben, I'm calling my boy up right now. Let me see. I'm gonna tell him about this. Chick got busted using steroids or whatever. Let's get him on speaker real quick. Come on. What's up, dude? Yo, I wanted to tell you real quick, bro. Um, remember that chick, the cyborg? I showed you the fight of her the other day. I had you come over right after the fight and I watched it on the cable box. Yeah. She was an animal, right? Um, 
Dude, you won't believe this. I started going through the headlines of breaking news like in the boxing forums and the MMA and stuff. Dude, she got busted and stripped of her title. She, dude, steroids, man. Oh, my God. Well, there's no surprise there, actually. I mean, Jesus Christ, I think she's seen her jawline. Would you say that again? Yeah, there's no surprise, though, because she's seen her jawline. Yeah, jawline. She looked like a dude. Yeah, totally. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Dude, I got I got to tell you, man, I'm recording you. You're live on my podcast vlogcast right now, Ruben. <laughs> yeah, man. That's cool. That's awesome. So how's everything else going? Real quick, uh, any thoughts on Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather? Are they ever going to fight? Let me just fill you in. Bob Aram says this weekend he flew to the uh, Philippines or whatever. Long story short, whatever the case is, Bob Aram says Saturday, if it's not done, they're going to look for Pacquiao's next opponent outside of Floyd. Are they going to fight? I don't think so, man. It's like, I, I think that Mayweather doesn't want anything to do with Pacquiao. It's like, he just said he told Ralph for more money or whatever. He wants the biggest share of the money. He's just doing something for millions of people not to fight him. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, man. It's just a shame. I wish I could see that fight, but uh, hopefully we'll see some interesting fights in 2012. All right, well said. See, I should have never told that I was recording you. As soon as I told the people, uh, uh, you, you change your whole thing. You know, people's listening to you. You're like, uh, you change your whole way of talking up, dude. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, well, yeah, t tell the wife I said hi. You have a great night. Uh, say hi to the kid for me, even though he won't understand. He's too young. All right, I'll talk to you soon, man. Peace. Peace, dude. Later. All right, dudes. Woo. All right. If Pacquiao uh, will return on a June date, if he doesn't get that May fight against Floyd, they're never going to fight, by the way. All this crap I'm reading over at Doghouse Boxing, incidentally, I go there a lot. Very knowledgeable fans are there. And they give me, I see what they're talking about, and I love going there. I've been there for years, and I listen to what they're saying, and 99% uh, of the guys are awesome there, and you get 1% jerks. But anyway, um, shouts to Bazooka over there, uh, a couple other guys, Coyote Durand, awesome artist. And um, anyway, I'm telling you dudes, right now, they're not going to fight. This is all bullshit. And when they do fight, if they do fight, they're both going to be like, it's going to be like Roy Jones versus uh, Hopkins too. They're both going to be like way past their prime. I mean, come on, they're in their 30s already. Floyd's older than Pac. Um, you got to figure in your 30s and your boxing, it's different. It's like a long year. Every year that goes by, they've been talking about these guys fighting for the last three, four years now. Now it peaked. Peaks dropped, you know, the Manuel Marquez fight, Juan Manuel Marquez fight, by the way, I told you it would be a tough fight for Pac, you know, a decision or whatever, and no surprise, and I don't know why, it's a whole nother thing I can get on uh, a whole tirade about, like, well, every time he fights Pac, it looks like that, so why all of a sudden, because, again, Manuel, Juan Manuel Marquez makes Pacquiao look like he's a, you know, a regular fighter, he gives him, and he's not, he gives him some competition, oh, the Floyd fight don't look that attractive, that's bullshit, because this happened way back in the day, you know, the second fight, it was close, it could have went either way, you know, so, come on, how does that diminish the Floyd factor, uh, doesn't matter, you know, styles make fights, anyway, I want to see the fight, I'm a frustrated fucking fan, I don't think it's going to go down. I don't think it's happening anytime soon. And if it does happen, they're going to be past their primes. Floyd's going to be pushing 40. He's going to need the money. He's probably going to be, you know, all screwed up. He gambles a lot. No one talks about gambling addiction. The guy is betting like a million dollars. These are rumors. But it, from what I know, I've seen the guy on the HBO 24-7 takes piles of money and throws them on teams. Now, when he's not making money anymore fighting and you still carry that addiction with you, where are you going? downhill, you know, you'll lose a lot of money like Mike Tyson, so then he's going to probably take a pack fight, Pack will be a little younger, and it's going to be retarded, because who cares, who cares, it'll be like uh, Roy Jones Jr. versus Tito Trinidad, you guys know what I'm talking about, if you're a big boxing fan, well, some of you guys, Lucien Boutet versus Carl Frotch, it's a done deal, Carl Frotch, awesome fighter, he represents the UK, yes, I picked war to win, and a lot of UK dudes like my show, they listen to me and whatever, and they give me props, and I, I love them too, I was watching Hat and Boxing ones live on a stream, and they, they had like, a, they were out in the UK in the auditorium, and they said, Team HBO, and I was typing live, and they give my channel a shout out, ESPN Friday Night Fights are back, I uploaded last week's promo, the, the announcement, the whole, you know, I edited the highlights, like usual, and I included the beginning, they gave a nice knockout promo, promo from last year's season. I never thought I'd miss them that bad, but I do every year. I miss ESPN too. When they go off the air, what is it, September? And they're not back until January. 
oh, I'm like, wow, you know, I have a love-hate uh, relationship with Teddy Atlas because Teddy Atlas is like shits all over Pacquiao. He downgrades Hopkins in his interviews, you know, makes excuses on why his picks are wrong. But the guy's very knowledgeable. I respect that and I love his work. But that's the love-hate thing right there. And I missed him. I missed Joe Tessitore. was awesome. I missed that show. And now it's back. And I promise you guys, as always, I will upload those highlights as fast as I can. And if I'm not doing it like until like seven hours later, that's because I'm with my new girlfriend somewhere, you, you know, hanging out, kind of club chilling or whatever. So I'll try to get that out as quick as possible for you guys, like always. And uh, that's for the Team HBO, YouTube Team HBO channel. And that's all you, if you hear this, go to YouTube Team HBO, one word. And uh, if they shut that channel down, no problem. I'll go somewhere else and do it. And then you got your fight, Big Com. This dude, Taser, he's my boy. He he writes me and a couple other dudes and he recognized me. Yes, that's me. I don't know how you, you, you told me you recognize me in that movie, Robert De Niro. I got a couple of lines. It's called, um, what the hell is it called? Everybody's fine. As a cab pulls up, Robert De Niro is waiting for his son and it's me. I get out of the car. A couple of lines. I'm like, yeah, I had a hard night. We did like 10 takes of that. I had a wild night, but it, it's so dark and it's so quick. The scene is lit like that. And a director and writer, he's awesome to work with. De Niro, just being there, being in frame with him was an amazing experience. You said, why don't I tell people this? Because I do this as a hobby. I love boxing. So I was like, all right, let me, I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I should tell you guys what's up. You know, I do have a little acting career going on and I do things, man. I'm in commercials, TV, film, and I'm also producing things overseas right now. Got some exciting things I just did. And it's like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's hard. Like these little horror things, they made it to, to, to a TBS Japanese station, is big stuff. But anyway, besides all that, I hope boxing this year is going to be a big year in boxing because we need the great fights and we need the Pacquiao Floyd thing, and it's not going to happen. It's all horseshit, and they're posturing back and forth. Bob Aaron blaming this one, it's a big circus. I don't have time for this crap. That's why I call my website fightbig.com. I want to deal with the big fights. I want to deal with fights, and I want to get right, right, cut right to the chase. I, you know, all these politics, all this bullshit. Get off it, because I, I don't have time for this crap. And uh, it's all lies and bullshit. So at the end of the day, you got two fighters that are the best in the world, arguably, and they're not fighting each other, and it just destroys boxing, okay? You don't see that in MMA. You don't see that in the UFC yet. Uh, that's why I like the UFC. You get competitive. I mean, these, these cards are stacked. When UFC, the last UFC, it was ridiculous. You get the prelims on Spike TV. Uh, as far as entertainment goes... You gotta just for now. I love boxing, but th this is an amazing. This is this enter the entertainment value of the UFC right now is like up here because boxing it's it's amazing. Boxing when it's a main event that's great. It's up here too, but there's a, a little bit of it. You know, in MMA you got a stacked card. It's ridiculous. It goes on and on and on and on. And you can build a whole night around it, and we need that in boxing. Really, we need competitive fights. And unfortunately, you got different promoters, different interests. Everything is all over the place. It's not one organization like the UFC, where one man, basically Dana White and Fertitta's brothers, hold it down and they make things happen and they make it competitive because they know they're going to lose viewership if they don't. Boxing doesn't have that, okay? It's a big con job, really. And um, I still love it. I'm a sucker. I buy every freaking pay-per-view. I can't help it, all right? I love it, all right? I get that high. I get that rush. There's nothing like a giant big boxing match. I get I get so excited off it. One time, I get so excited. It happened once in my life. When Julio Cesar Chavez fought Frankie Randall the first time and Chavez got knocked down, Randall won that fight, I puked after the fight. That's how excited I was. I threw up. Yeah. So that's how stoked I was for that fight. But dudes, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm over 16 minutes, which means I gotta edit this up anyway for YouTube. So I'm out, I'll be back soon. I know I've been doing things, I've been running around, I've been busy, so I haven't got these podcasts out like I should have, and these video casts, but I'll be back soon, shortly, two weeks maybe, maybe one week, maybe three weeks. All right dudes, peace. For uncensored boxing talk, for uncensored MMA talk, Tune in to the fightbig.com podcast.